Hello and welcome to this episode of Church at Home for the third Sunday of Advent. Father Ed Estock here. Father Joshua Treffy. Father Michael Petrosi. And Jim Livingston, the pastoral intern. Yeah, and so we are, uh, there's a couple things. It's not only the third Sunday of Advent, it is what the church calls in, I guess it's Latin, uh, Gaudete. Uh, Sunday meaning rejoicing or joyful Sunday. And uh, we will be lighting the uh, rose-colored candle, and we'll be donning vesture that we'll be suggesting uh, the the rising sun that we can see the uh, dawning of the light of the world coming across the horizon. So the purple night turns into a little bit of a rosy uh, dawn. So I think that's the. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, maybe uh, an easy way to say it. So uh, that's the cause of our joy. La causa de nostra letizia. Yes. How about that? The cause of our joy. That is a title of the Blessed Virgin Mary, by the way. Anyway, so uh, here we are. And we have decided that while seeing the light in the dawn uh, coming up, uh, the kingdom of God maybe being born in our midst at this Christmas time uh, might be a... A decent metaphor for uh, what we're hearing in the scriptures, and uh, um, in so we we have as um, John the Baptist is brought up again. Is he was brought up last weekend? He's a big figure um, throughout all the season of Advent because he's proclaiming the coming of the kingdom of God. And so in this week's gospel, he sends his his disciples to go see Jesus and to ask him if he is. Uh, the one who is to come. And so Jesus says, uh, well, don't just take my word for it. Here are the things that you see before you. And he um, mirrors the proclamation of the uh, scriptures of Isaiah, where he says that the lame will walk and the uh, deaf will hear and that those who are in prison will be set free. And he says, look, these things are happening before you. So uh, Jesus points them to this awareness of what's going on around them, and then he uh, sends them back to John to report. So we have kind of launched onto this notion that the process of uh, awakening to this Advent faith is a matter of seeing. Uh, the kingdom of God in its manifestations, and that we uh, we might uh, need to uh, focus on what it is and how we see the kingdom of God in our midst before we can uh, plan to share it with mm -hmm. others. I guess. Um, what would that? Uh, uh, philosophical you, phrase I was saying before. You can't uh, give can't what you don't have. have. Yeah. Yeah. You can't teach what you haven't received. Right. right. And so um, we have been uh, reflecting on the call to evangelize, to uh, spread the kingdom of God. Right, because um, Jesus doesn't just say, okay, be aware of what's going on, see all these miracles that are happening, and then keep your mouth shut. He says, go tell John. Go tell other people. <laughs> right. And John the Baptist, of course, is encouraging us last week and uh, to um, don't just confess your sins, repent, but manifest the kingdom of God in your lives. Mm -hmm. Of course, the letter of James uh, says the same thing uh, today. And uh, so I guess we might have a two-pronged thing here. Do we see the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we use the word behold in the new translation of the Roman Missal now a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll have it with the Annunciation uh, uh, story and, um, uh, well, we just have it all the time. Uh, and uh, it is much more obvious in the translation of the scriptures, the new translation of scriptures, as well as the um, missal. So this beholding, do you behold the kingdom of God that is right at hand? Mm -hmm. We even have it in in the liturgy, mm -hmm. you know, every week we say, behold the Lamb of God. Yeah. 
him who takes away the sins of the world. Right. So it's not just see, but also appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Ties in with the first reading again with the whole uh, behold your God is among you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. And, yeah, if you're not behold your God is among you. Um, you know, and so that might be uh, the first challenge is do we Yeah, and how do we how do we actually do that, right? So yeah. where in our lives do we have the opportunity to behold the kingdom of God before us? You know, I think we don't take a lot of time, many of us, to actually uh, look at look and see like where is God active in my life? You know, um, in the decisions that I'm making, in the things that I'm seeing around me, in the people that uh, assist us with whatever <laughs> prayers or just by being present and are we recognizing God, the kingdom of God, present in our neighbors, in our loved ones, um, in our places of work, in our uh, community? You know, where there's, I mean, it, it can, sometimes we get into the habit of just doing the business mm -hmm. of being Christian, you know, mm -hmm. instead of actually living it. And, well, and to continue the theme of noticing it mm -hmm. um, draws my mind to something that, I find myself talking about in confession a lot, often telling penitents, well, okay, you, before you came in here, you examined your conscience and you counted up your sins. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, this brings out, as we look at the near occasion of sin and what might have led you down those roads, we see a lot of struggle. And it's always easier to see the negative, right? Mm -hmm. We see our sins, yeah. we see our mistakes, and we see the burdens and the crosses and um, just all the struggle. Mm -hmm. Go forward from here, and often it's, it's literally a penance for me. Go count your blessings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Find three, find five really significant blessings, and make a prayer of thanksgiving for them. So, to absolutely. notice the kingdom, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's like you know, let's mm -hmm. look, especially this Advent and this Christmas season, to really look for the blessings that that are there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying the struggles aren't, I'm not saying mm -hmm. the difficulties aren't. They're certainly there too, but mm -hmm. um, so are the good things and yeah, the blessings absolutely. that come. Yeah. Yeah. The kingdom, literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of reminds me actually of the examine prayer. Where you're seeing, you're going through your life, through your day, and seeing where God was in it. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. necessarily where you made a mistake or anything like that, but like where God was in your day. And the idea being that you're seeing God more active in your life. Yeah, like, that's a great right? yeah, tool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And also, I'm an examine maybe is that, and where was I not? Yeah, that's, uh, that is part uh, of it too. Uh, uh, attentive to the mm -hmm. presence of God. But rather more attentive to my own mm -hmm. uh, devices. Yeah. If you are if you are not sure what the examine prayer is, it's a, um, a tool given to us by St. Ignatius uh, of Loyola. And you can find, if you just Google it, you can find a ton of uh, different versions of it. You can find one that fits into your day. And there's lots of apps that have it as well. So mm -hmm. it's very easily accessible right now. Yeah. Um, and so, Maybe I would term Father Joshua's question to all of us kind of on the flip is that where in your life, your daily life, is the kingdom of not, mm. the kingdom of God not? Mm -hmm. And so we would have to begin, well, I guess the kingdom of God is, as the Bible says this week, is at hand. So it's not that the kingdom of God isn't there. It is uh, where by faith do I need to have my eyes open that I might behold the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking, when you said about Christmas and all that kind of stuff, you know, sometimes we mistake uh, the pleasant for the blessing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, oh, well, aren't we blessed? God blesses everyone, you know, Tiny Tim says at the uh, <laughs> end of the Christmas carol. Um, you know, that's the, e I don't want to say it's cheap, mm -hmm. but that's the easy uh, yeah. is to... Uh, Proclaim the kingdom of God when everything's hunky dory, or yeah. on the, you know when the mm -hmm. sun is shining. Uh, but I think the challenge that maybe John the Baptist and Jesus is giving us is no, no, no. Be convinced in faith that the kingdom of God is at hand, and now strive to see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, be strong. Be don't be afraid. Look at it and see it where it is. Yeah. Oh, right. and then yeah, and then that takes us to the second prong. You know, you, the first is being aware of where the kingdom is and maybe where it isn't in our life. And then to take the place where it isn't in our life and to proclaim 
lifting them there. Yeah, you know, make to, it, make yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah point out to others. Uh, yeah. You know, um, you know, as maybe Father Michael's uh, confessional advice, that would be great conversation between parents and spouses, parents and kids, whatever, co-workers, is that when somebody's really discouraged or uh, and noticing the negative, uh, to um, try to encourage the discernment of where is God mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. Because it's not true that God has abandoned you. <laughs> so it must be true that God is present to you, but... Uh, well, it takes yeah. faith to see it. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Like when someone is feeling, uh, if, when they're in the midst of their struggle and they're feeling abandoned, forgotten, whatever you want to say, unloved, unworthy, however you want to say it, um, that's an opportunity for us to proclaim into that. Like, okay, you don't see God, but let me help you yeah. see God. You are loved. You are worthy. He has not forgotten you. Right. He has not abandoned you. And that's a way for us to fulfill that right. proclamation uh, of the gospel right. in that moment. Right, so the kingdom of God is not only something to behold, the kingdom of God is something to proclaim. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, we, we have uh, both responsibilities with faith. So, mm-hmm. right, great, well, Gaudete. God bless you all. See you.